Okay, I want to go back to, you mentioned AI, and I know you gave a TED Talk a couple years ago about how you learn to stop worrying and how to love AI. <laughs> do you love AI? Are you worried about <laughs> AI? How are so, you feeling? Um, my, my talk was deliberately positive because I wanted everyone to go away feeling like it was all right, but I didn't really feel that positive <laughs> having done <tongue laughs> the search. Uh, so I did this talk uh, like five years ago or so, and uh, it's because, you know, when I was a kid, I, I believed AI would be with us like in no time and it would be amazing. <laughs> and then we all went through the AI drought where actually we discovered that intelligence is a lot more complex and difficult than we realized. And then suddenly we found out that actually all we need is fast enough computers and enough RAM. <laughs> and so while researching the, the talk, yeah, I read all the material like super intelligence by Bo Strom and... All the uh, I've discovered Roko's Basilisk, which you should never look up if you haven't. Do not look it up. And <laughs> all these other things, and I became like worried. Certainly, you know, we won't be able to control it. Like the example I used in my talk was an AI applied to Wall Street, and uh, it was tasked with accumulating as much money as possible. So it then accumulates like all the money, and then uh, you know, obviously, the global economy would collapse because no one entity can have the wealth and i thought that was you know a fairly good example because like it's not like terminator right it's it's not like uh, a science fiction movie where it hates us you know it's possible it'll hate us but it seems more likely it would just be unaligned in some like mm. trivial way <laughs> mm. and then it's not human so we can't figure out how to stop it but i've become more confident honestly over the years because i saw that the people doing the ai research are targeting these things so heavily towards humanistic pursuit and incorporating human data to such a huge extent like chat gpt is built on all of human knowledge from got from the internet so it just can't not be human really in the way he behaves that's all it knows i've become more confident that whatever happens you know who knows how quickly this is going to happen i follow a bunch of people on twitter who think it's going to be tomorrow and a bunch of people who think it's going to be 20 years i asked my friend who used to work at deep mind what he thought I asked him four years ago when I did my talk. And he said, oh, Max, we're nowhere near anything like that. Like, we don't even understand how we could get there. And then I asked him, like, a few weeks back, a month after ChatGPT was released, he was like, six years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I agree. I think, I mean, in, in OpenAI's case, it's built on top of all of human knowledge. So how could it not be human at its core? But also, you know, I think... I'm excited about the the potential of what AI allows us to do in terms of becoming more productive, becoming mm -hmm. more in tune with ourselves because you have something that is so intelligent that you can directly have a conversation with and you can learn from. Yeah, it's, it's really and cool, isn't it? It's, it's incredible. I hope all of our listeners out there are playing around with it because... Well, uh, I hope so as well, because let's face it, if you're not ahead of this curve, then you've got a good chance of being replaced by it. <laughs>